about Palestinian life under occupation in the West Bank. And you can check down below for links to all the other segments as I make them. All of them will be listed down below. But please subscribe, hit the bell. As I roll these out, you will be notified. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, we're going to talk today about the travel and document situation in Palestine and in Israel. So when I first landed in Israel and then landed into and then uh, traveled into Jerusalem and then on to the West Bank, one of the first things that stuck out to me was the very complicated identification system imposed on the Palestinians, which make living a normal life pretty difficult. So I'm going to do my best to explain this to you, but it's pretty complicated. So you're going to hopefully stick with me. I'm going to do my best. So we're going to start off with License plates and segregated roads. This is the first thing one notices when they travel into the region. Um, you'll notice that license plates vary in color. So there's two different ones. There's ones for Israelis and there's ones for Palestinians. Now remember, the region, the entire region of Israel is very small. Um, so you can travel easily within hours throughout the entire country. So you're seeing these different license plates as you travel around, as you go in and out of the West Bank, into the Israel side, into the West Bank side. Um, yellow and black is for Israeli. Green and white is for Palestinian. Now, all throughout the West Bank, um, well, for one, green and white license plates are not allowed into Israel at all. So you cannot take a green and white registered vehicle, a Palestinian registered vehicle into Israel. However, Israelis can travel into the West Bank with their yellow and black license plates. And there are many roads throughout the West Bank that are segregated. You cannot drive on those roads unless you have a yellow and black license plate. So if you are a Palestinian with a Palestinian registered car, you're not allowed on these roads, even though these roads are inside the West Bank, which is supposed to be Palestinian territory, but as we know, it's heavily occupied by the Israelis. There's hundreds of settlements that are built throughout the West Bank. And Israelis say the reason why they built these roads is to make life easier for the Israeli settlers that are living in these settlements, because there are about 140 checkpoints throughout the West Bank that Palestinians are subjected to. They've got to go through these checkpoints, and oftentimes it's very disruptive to their lives. They're very slow. Uh, they can take hours on end. Sometimes the checkpoints are closed down. Sometimes the checkpoints don't exist. You know, sometimes they pop up, they disappear, and then they pop back up. And this leads to a, a, a delay. It's a traffic jam for the Palestinians. Well, in order for the Israeli settlers to avoid those traffic jams, they built themselves separate roads all throughout the West Bank. And only Israelis are allowed on those roads. Now, there is a misconception that these roads are Jewish only. That's not the case. Anybody who is Israeli, including Arab Israelis, Palestinian Israelis, they are allowed to drive on those roads. So as long as you're an Israeli citizen, or, uh, or, you know, an American citizen renting an Israeli car because you're allowed to do that and you have an Israeli car with a, with a yellow and black license plate, you're allowed on those special roads that are segregated and all throughout the West Bank. So that is one of the first things that is that one notices when traveling into the area, the segregated roads and the fact that Palestinians are subjected to these extremely long, cumbersome and worrisome checkpoints. I mean, imagine one of the problems with the checkpoints is, you know, let's say you're on your way to a wedding or to a doctor's appointment or just to work and school, and you have to cross through one of these many 140 checkpoints all throughout the West Bank. Um, if you're crossing those and there's the Israelis feel like there's some kind of security threat and what normally takes you 45 minutes to get through a checkpoint instead now it's closed and you're not able to get to your destination or it's backlogged and you're looking at four hours to get through this makes life extremely worrisome and difficult for Palestinians because the checkpoints are often shut down or they're often uh, taking much longer than normal so a Palestinian living just a normal life, trying to get to and from work, trying to get to and from school, it's very, very difficult. Those who are really needing to go somewhere like a wedding or to a doctor's appointment, they have to plan their lives to where, you know, like the average person like myself, if my doctor's appointment is, if my doctor's office is 30 minutes away, then I leave 30 minutes from now to get to my doctor's office. A Palestinian, on the other hand, has to take into consideration that the checkpoint they need to go through might be closed or might be 
um, delayed. And so they have to go to their destination hours and hours and hours in advance if it's a special occasion, especially like a wedding or a doctor's appointment. They've got to plan that out way in advance. So it's extremely disruptive to their lives that they have these checkpoints all throughout the West Bank. Now, these checkpoints don't only exist um, you know, one would think, well, okay, maybe you have to go through a checkpoint if you're going from Palestine into Israel, right? That makes sense. It's border security. But that's not what's happening over there. What's happening is these checkpoints are all throughout the West Bank, dotted around just anywhere Palestinians want to go. So if they're traveling from one Palestinian town to another Palestinian town, and they're not going anywhere near the Israeli border, there's still a checkpoint they have to go through. So that is one of the first things you notice, of course, are the roads, the traveling, the segregation, and the checkpoints that Palestinians are subjected to, very disruptive to their lives. Another thing that becomes apparent is when you're traveling into the areas A, um, in which now I, I realize I need to describe areas A, B, and C to you, but when you travel into area A, now area A is Palestinian controlled area. So this had to, this was something that went back to the Oslo Accords where when they were trying to make peace in the region, what they did was they gave the Palestinian Authority control over areas A. They gave joint control to Israelis and the Palestinian Authority in areas B. And area C is full Israeli control. It's occupied by military and the Israeli Defense Forces control and secure or monitor, whatever you want to call it, that area. Now, Area C makes up about 60 to 70 percent of the West Bank. It's the rural kind of outskirts, the farmland. And this is also the area where all of the settlements are built. So Area C is controlled by the Israelis. They've allowed these settlements to pop up on these lands and um, obviously causing a lot of contention and strife 